All right. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the p- 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 pod. To the pod. How those peas sounding, huh? How's the pod picking up those peas? <laughs> uh, pick up the pea. All right. Hope you guys are doing all right. This is episode 138, I believe, right? Let me do a quick episode check. Yep, 138. Nailed it. Um, hope y'all are doing... Hope y'all are doing, you know? Uh, fart, man. Try not to swear in the first minute, because then YouTube is like, no ads for you. No ads for a little... No ads for this dad. No ad for the podcast dad. Um, but we're out here, man. You know, we're chilling, we're rocking, we're rolling. We're joshing, we're brawling. <laughs> Had to you had to say that. <laughs> had to do it. Um, I will say I organically said that before uh, my little pre podcast meeting with uh, my with Jacob, my producer, and he told me to use that in the podcast. Now I didn't have to explain why I said that, but I did. I felt like I was lying to you guys. Okay, that was a pre written little joke, <laughs> and I uh, and I want to be upfront with you guys. Um. You can see a little bit of my forehead today because I'm wearing a, a snapback hat. You know, I have one of those. I, I'm usually all banged up, you know, but I do have a forehead. Um, I do have a pretty big forehead, and that's usually why I don't show it because it's humongous. <laughs> For most of my life, it's been a, it's pretty large, you know. I could play a... It was, it's been good, you know, once because all the golf courses were closed in the wintertime. So it's pretty good because I can usually I could play a fucking hole of golf on my forehead because so big because it's so big. You know, I uh, there's some people I'll be walking down the street and um, people will just like, you know, real estate investors will kind of just stop me <laughs> if they see my forehead. and They'll be like, hey. What's uh? How much? How much for me to put a? How much for me to put a fucking condo building on your fucking forehead, bro? How much? You taking uh? You taking offers or what? <laughs> it's free real estate. It's free real estate up here, man. That's all good. Uh, <laughs> I'm dressed like a a frat boy. I got my I got my YYU hoodie on. My frat sort of like frat letters. I'm dressed like a frat boy, dude. Except you, you know, flip around the R and the A. I'm dressed like a fart boy, dude. I'm dressed like a, I'm, I'm dressed like an MFing fart boy. Yo, join my fraternity. So when we fart for an eternity. So when we sit in a house, our fart house, it smells. It smells. Our fart house smells. Our fraternity house. Um, and then you, uh, we just fart for an eternity. We don't go to class. We actually didn't even get into the college that that we're associated with. We're sort of just just off campus. Um, <laughs> none of us actually go to uh, to Dalhousie, but you know we are <laughs> we are loosely sort of associated with them because we fart close to the campus. Um, <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, shaved my mustache, if you couldn't tell. Uh, it's been, I've been going crazy over here. I shaved it off. Um, so how's, and it's, and I miss it already. It's already coming back though. Like I'm, I'm already seeing like a little bit. So I'm finally becoming a man, you know? Like my dude, my great, my grand, my uh, my papa, as I call him, my uh, my great grandfather on my mother's side, um, he his his beard is so thick, dude. His beard's got a big ass. <laughs> his beard's double cheeked up. No, his beard is like he could shave it, and then by the time he's like he could start shaving his left side of the face, he'll work his way to the right side, and by the time he's done his right side, the left side will be back. 
It's it grows so fast. It's crazy and thick too. And I and I hope I can have that. I hope I work up to that by the time I'm his age. Um because I, I I'm gonna because I probably won't have any hair on the top of my head. So if I can at least get him on the bottom of my head, that'd be that'd be cool. Also, it's weird calling a beard the bottom of your head. Like this is the bottom of your head, but it's not it's like your chin. But no one ever calls it the bottom of your head. And this is what we're talking about today on the podcast. <laughs> really, uh, we're really going deep. Okay, we're, tar- we're targeting the hard issues. All right. Bot- we're getting to the bottom of the head. All right. So no bottom of the head. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'm losing my fucking mind, man. We're... Um, if you guys didn't know, I live in Ontario, Canada, which is the absolute fucking dog shit place to be right now. All right, we're in a we're in another lockdown, um, which is funny that they do that because we've been in lockdown since December twenty sixth. Um, and hey, why? Why put us in a lockdown after the, the the after Christmas where everyone's gonna see their families and fucking swap spit? Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> They're not gonna be making up you know what I mean. Why why do that, first off? And then we were out of a we're sort of out of a lockdown, sort of, for like a week. And then Guys, it's so fucking stupid. I don't get it. I'm a complain about it, all right? I get that you have to, that we have to be in lockdown cuz cases are going up because of the variants, right? Cuz why not? Cuz cuz why not, you know? Uh so we have to be in lockdown. I totally get that. But the lockdown isn't even a lockdown, right? Like things are still open. People still have to go to work. Like, retail is still open. Ah! (laughs) Hey, why? (laughs) You know? People are dying, but yeah, I need new... I need need new shoes from Aldo. Absolutely, I do. I need new fucking wingtips. I need new fucking loafers, bro. That's that's essential. It's so... It's so bullshit, man. So we're in another lockdown, um, and this guy, the premier of Ontario, his name is Doug Ford, and first off, fishy, fishy, fish. oh wait, no, first off, that's what I think of him, he sucks so hard, because he goes, he does his fucking, he does his fucking, uh, he does his fucking speech thing or press conference about the lockdown, and he's like, listen guys, this is the young people's fault. This is the young people in Toronto. This is their fault. All right. He didn't exactly say that, but he said that. And he's blaming young people for all the COVID. Yet, these young people, they're frontline workers. They have to go to the places that you won't shut down. They have to work there. And the, the only reason, and the only way they can afford their fucking apartments is to get roommates where other people are going to do frontline work. So if you just shut everything down, we'll be fine. But he's like, no, dude, I got to... Let's just keep going in a lockdown where everything is closed, but also open at the same time. And I know all the outbreak is in the schools, but you know what? Let's keep the schools open. Like, fuck, man, I get it. And I, I'm blessed. I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home and follow the protocols whatever it is i'm happy to do that but i you know i feel for people and when you see you know you see new zealand do actual lockdowns that actually work and then when you see america doing like huge vaccinations it's like what the fuck man what the fuck am i doing what are we what are we supposed to do huh what are we what are we supposed to do mate you know it's fucking, it's really frustrating, man. And it's like, you want us to, 
to be in lockdown until we can get vaccinated, but we can't get vaccinated till like the fucking end of the end of the summer. Ay ay ay, it's maddening. Maddening, I tell ya. So that's uh so that's what's been going on. Pretty cool, you know. Haven't seen uh haven't been able to hang out with friends in a wa- in a fucking long time. We're trying our best to follow the the guidelines. But, you know, I can understand why people are getting pissed off and not following them. I don't I don't want to put blame on them cuz like our government is are is literally fucking us in the butt. You know, well not literally. <laughs> Figuratively. But as literally but as literal as a figurative thing can get. Um They're fingering us figuratively. <laughs> figuratively, they're fingering us. <laughs> oh my gosh. Make dude. Make me the the friggin' premier of Ontario. I'd crush it. I'd crush it, dude. I'd be such a good I'd be such a good premier. You know, I could do premieres on YouTube. I know how to do that. I could do I could hit the premiere button. Um I'd be like, what's good, Ontario? Everything is shut down for a month. Okay, this is the last one we're doing. Nothing. You all get paid sick days. You all get, you know, you know, free groceries delivered. Everybody. And then that's it. And then we're done. Because if it was just one, it's for sure expensive. But we would have saved, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm no, I'm no friggin' politician. All right? Would you rather roll up the politician, please? That Beyonce song? Politician? <laughs> it's that song about being in the back of a limo. And you're just getting so hot and heavy that you become politicians. Forever, I'm a politician, babe. Gonna implement some new laws. Take all the funds. I just wanna be the mayor you like. <laughs> dude, uh, this is. I'm gonna do a song parody podcast, dude. <laughs> Strictly song parodies. For an hour, it's me just like, and I don't even plan it beforehand. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, hmm, what are other songs? Hmm. I could do one about the hamster dance, but it's, uh, one about prank, the prankster dance. That's pretty funny, <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> um, I, you know, I could do one for, that'd be literally the worst podcast. <laughs> but so is this, so it's all good. Um, But since we've been in lockdown, uh, dude, I want to talk about this show we've been watching so much. We've been watching Degrassi like crazy. And if you guys don't know what Degrassi is, you know, get on board, all right? Get on board. Degrassi is a Canadian treasure, Okay. It's where Drake got his start. Drake used to be... Drake was a star of the show. Jimmy, he played He played a, a, a high schooler in a wheelchair. Um, and he crushed it, dude. And, and now he's the richest man alive. Now he's the most... He's the most rapper ever. Um, now Drake is the most rapper. Um, but... It shows like people in high, like kids in high school. It's a high school like drama, you know. It's like a soap opera, if you will, for for uh, for children. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we've been watching it like crazy because, um, you know, all the episodes are on YouTube, and we've just been crushing it. But man, every time I watch it, I'm like, well, okay. Every time I watch it, I'm like, why is everyone being so dramatic over everything? But at the same time, I remember when I was in high school and everything that happened 
was like the most important thing of all time. It was like, oh, this is life or death. This is life or death, dude. If I miss, dude, if I get, if I get a, a, a less than a 70 on this test, I'm going to die. <laughs> I am going to have a funeral for me. That was, that's how it was. Um, and it's not true at all. Like high school, it's doesn't fucking matter at all because school, you know, it's high school. <laughs> well, it matters. Go to high school and, you know, graduate. But um, you know what I mean? In terms of like relationships, for the most part, um, in general terms, doesn't matter. Uh, so it's very funny to watch like these high school dramas where it's like, Everyone's just freaking out about everything. And let me, well, I will say that, dude, the grassy, the grassy students, the shit they go through is way, way worse than regular high school. Um, Getting a phone call from a number. I don't know. So not going to answer it. Um, And that's fucking life 101, dude. If you get a number, if you get a call from a number you don't know, you don't answer it, they can leave a message. Um, but, and that's just a fucking life tip for you, dude. Uh, <laughs> but no, like literally, and I'll, I'll like, I'll be watching an episode, like we'll be watching an episode of Degrassi and then like this literally happened yesterday. I went upstairs to like get a bit of work done. I come back down like an hour later. One of the characters now has a Coke addiction. Ah, what? I was gone for an hour. I was gone for two episodes. And this person already developed a drug addiction. And they're in 10th grade. It's like, whoa, man. Imagine if high school is actually like that. Like you you, uh, you go on like a, you take a sick day, right? Take a sick day. Like you have to fucking call your principal and check if that's okay. How many do I have left? <laughs> is that all right? Can I still get paid? Um... Can I still get grade? Uh, no, like you, you're you're sick. You stay home one day because you're sick. Then you come back, like one guy's like lost his arm, and you know, another kid is like, <laughs> it's a drug problem. Your teacher's like in a wheelchair now, and you're like, wait, what happened, guys? And they're like, this is the grassy, okay? You don't know if you miss one day, <laughs> you're fucked, okay? The school exploded and they had to rebuild it. This is a new school you're in. And you're like, what? It's been one day. And they're like, no, it's actually been 10 years. You've been in a coma. And you're like, huh? And the fucking theme song comes in. Whatever it takes. I know I can make it down. That's the other thing, dude. (laughs) It's like YouTube intros where it's like someone will just say the most gnarly shit. And then they're like, upbeat intro will play. Like a Degrassi intro would be like, hey, babe, I'm pregnant and on fire. The baby's on fire in my stomach. And then it'll just cut to, whatever it takes, I know I can make it through. <laughs> and everyone's so stoked. And like, whoa, dial it back. There's a baby on fire in someone's stomach. Maybe we should address this before the fucking theme song. <laughs> You know? <laughs> oh, man. It's great, though. I love it. I love Degrassi. Um, can't wait to... I w- And it's a real school, too. It's a real school in Toronto. We want to we go see it. You know? It's very iconic. That's like the one... That's what we did with... Uh, it's like when we watch a show, we just get so friggin'... Uh, obsessed with it (laughs) we when we watch dude when we watch prison break for the first time holy shit um we were obsessed dude we actually like we're on a road trip and we like detoured to like to joliet in illinois i think to where the prison is that they filmed in kind of and uh sketchy little town but we just needed to see it because of the show we liked. Um, but yeah, shout out to Grassy. Shout out 
everyone who's ever been on that show. If anyone's ever been on the show and you watch my podcast, I, <laughs> I'm freaking out right now. I can't believe you're watching. <laughs> Thank, thanks for the support. I, I'm okay. I'm pretty starstruck right now. Now I'm, now I'm nervous. Do you think Drake is watching right now, dude? Drake's best work was on Degrassi. Sorry, I know, uh, you know, Views from the Six was, you know, a pretty good album, but Jimmy, got nothing on Jimmy. <laughs> um, Fuck, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. Hold on, I'm going to drink some water. Yo, dude, other shit that's been going on, we hit 100K on the gaming channel. Uh, let me find a friggin' air horn right quick. Yeah, dude. 100K on the gaming channel on Curtis Pogger. Uh, crazy. Crazy, man. Two weeks. Had it for two weeks. And then already got to 100K. Fucked. Let me get another plaque. Plaque check. Call me a fucking dentist, bro. I'm doing plaque checks. I'm stoked. It's going to fuck up the feng shui because I have an uneven number of silver ones compared to my gold one, but that's just my life, man. It fucking sucks. <laughs> all these plaques, bro. Fuck, all these fucking milestones, man. Drinking every night. Be- oh, wait. Drinking every night because we drink to my accomplishments. Fading me too much. I'm floating in and out of consciousness and they say I'm not. All right, I had to quote some Jimmy real quick. Had to quote the Jimmy. Um, What else is going on? Should we change the subject, dude? Y'all see that? Y'all see that Lil Nas X video, dude? Y'all see that shit? Old Town Road. <laughs> What was up with that guy? That was my impressionation. That was my impressionation of a guy who has a podcast who is a year behind, but it lines up perfectly with something else that's happening in the same with the same person. Very specific character, but I think it's pretty funny. Um, do you guys hear about James Charles the Tati stuff? Man, crazy. <laughs> Do you guys hear about Donald Trump? He might run for president. <laughs> That's crazy. And it would never happen. Podcaster who doesn't watch the news. He only watches the news from five years ago. Uh, it's a pretty good character. I could develop. Um, but no, people were... Dude, the Lil Nas X video is sick. Um, also, when you say Lil Nas X really quick, sounds like Lil... Uh, nah, sex. So just a little, uh, observation, uh, I could throw out there if you don't mind. Um, but no, his video is so cool for Montero. Call me by your name. Is that what it's called? Um, he was like, you know, sliding down that stripper pole into hell, gives the devil a lap dance, dude. And then he kills him. Crazy. You're, you're crazy for that. <laughs> It's sick, though, you know? Um, And oh, boy. Oh, boy, did religious people get absolutely pissed off. Because obviously, they need something. They need something to 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 freaking rack their brains over, right? They're going crazy. Um, So when they see someone use any sort of imagery um, from the Bible, they freaking shard about it. They have an absolute biblical shard about it, okay? They absolutely pray their balls off about it. Um, <laughs> prayed so hard my balls fell off about this little Nas X thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting so worked up over it. My, my balls fell off, so. Yo, my balls fell off. Low-key, they used to be on top of the charts, but they fell off. Yo, my balls low key fell off. <laughs> my balls low key fell off, bro. They're nowhere near where they used to be. <laughs> prayed so hard. Uh, <laughs> prayed so hard, I'm hard about it. 
Yeah, I mean, this Lil Nas X video got me so worked up about God and stuff. It it got me so offended. I got a boner about it. What's what's up with that? Huh? This little this Lil Nas X video was so was so messed up. I. And and it, it pissed me off so much I got a boner over it. <laughs> What's up with that, guys? Like some preacher who was like, "Who else got a boner watching it?" And everyone's like, well, "Hold on, what?" He's like, "Yeah, I, I mean it." Er, F, okay, no one else did. I think it was because of the the devil. The devil was, the devil was there, and he was kind of jerking me off. I think. I mean, it was my hand because I got so, you know, hot and bothered from it. But it was my hand and the devil was sort of, you know, doing that, <laughs> doing that for me. Right? And like, everyone's like, I think you just really, I think you just really like that video. And he's like, no, I, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I, can, I can never. Oh, that's so funny. You get so you're doing like this big like heated speech about it. You're like, this is the work of the devil. This this music video is a work of the devil and Lucifer. It got me so worked up. I got a boner about it. I jizzed over it, and everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. I got so worked up, I jizzed over it, and I jizzed all over everything, and I just uh, I jizzed on everything I saw, and it was and this we need to stop Lil Nas X. We need to stop him. Everyone's like, hold on, go back. Would you say? Would you say? Oh, that's funny. Um, but no, that video is sick, dude. And it's so funny how people get so, like the same people who would be like, who call other people snowflakes would be the people to be like, (laughs) what? How could he, (laughs) how could he make a music video? You know, relax, you know, it's not your music video. (laughs) It's not yours. You know, I don't know. It's so funny how people get so they get their they get their they get their freaking they get their freaking panties in a knot over it. They get their freaking robes in a knot. Um, but I think it's great. If I had the budget and time to do stuff like that, that'd be amazing. My green screen effect of me. If I did a green screen effect of me sliding into hell on a stripper pole, <laughs> it looks so jacked up. I love that idea, though. It's very funny. It's very, uh, he's always had really great visuals. I like his, uh, I like his music videos. Um, uh, okay, should we, let's switch, let's switch gears. You know that, uh. You know that friggin' transformer sound that they did when they change? <laughs> you know? Oh man, I'm losing my marbles. Um okay. What should we do? We're at like twenty not twenty eight something. I'm trying to think. Yeah, okay. Let's how about we skip that? You know what we're gonna do, guys? Speaking of James Charles, I mentioned him uh, before. Um, We are going to do an apology video review. Uh, Okay, I've never done this on the pod before, but I think it could be fun, right? We'll we'll watch his, because I haven't watched his apology video yet. Um, You know, for being, uh, and I guess trigger warning here for um, grooming. And, you know, you know, predatory behavior. Um, so how about we watch this thing and see what he's fucking, see what he has to say for his, uh, for himself. Uh, if you didn't know, he was accused of, um, you know, talking to people under the age of 18 several times, like a bunch of fucking times, which is weird as hell. Um, so... And which is weird because, like, he's made several apologies for this stuff before. And it's never been like, I'm I'm doing bad stuff. 
and I and I'm gonna fix that. It's just like I didn't know. How am I supposed to know? It's their fault, right? Which is fucked up. So how about we uh without further ado, let's fucking watch this thing. It's called Holding Myself Accountable. It's got six million views. Um all right. Here we go. Hello everyone, James Charles here, and today I'm going to be making a very important video about a very important topic. Uh, as many of you guys know, about two years ago now, I was involved with a very public online scandal in which some fellow YouTubers made some very serious accusations against me, and within the past couple of weeks, similar accusations yeah. are being made again. And I Yeah, so two, two years ago. So this is like a thing that's this is a thing that like keeps happening, right? It's not like this is a one-off. Yeah, the top comment is once is an accident, twice is a coincidence, and three times is a pattern. And this is like the fourth or fifth time. I don't know. I think it's very important that I get on camera and talk to you guys honestly about what is going on. Uh, when this first happened two years ago, I uploaded a video to my channel called No More Lies, and that video was a very planned video. It focused on receipts and screenshots and defending myself in the situation. But I want you guys to know that this video that I'm going to be making today, Dude, is there's nothing like titling an apology video, you know, no more lies, holding myself accountable. I'm fucking sorry. You know, you got to get those, you got to get even, even in, when you're doing an apology, this is like, well, I need a fucking good ass title, huh? I mean, I get it, but I mean, what else are you supposed to title it? I know, but still. Epic apology. James Charles, epic apology. It's going to be nothing like No More Lies. Uh, this is not exactly planned. I don't have a script. I will let you guys know that I do have just some notes in front of me of points that I want to make because this is a very, very serious topic. Uh, Dude, his haircut sucks. His hair sucks in this video. I'll say that. And that's coming from me, dude. That's coming from a mullet that I haven't cut in three months. It looks like someone... Like, it, it looks like... There should be, like, one egg in the middle of it. You know in Legend of Zelda, when you get the bird, you get the bird egg? It's in that nest. <laughs> that's what that looks. There should be one egg... So just someone put one egg in the middle of the haircut and it'd be like, yo, dude, that's a straight up nest. But today's video is going to be from the heart and I'm going to focus on what happened, uh, the conclusions that I've come to, and most importantly, holding myself accountable for my own actions. First and foremost, I okay. say sorry. Um, I owe a massive apology to anybody that I've hurt or anybody that I've made uncomfortable with my actions. And I also want to say I'm sorry to my friends, family, and fans that have to watch another one of these videos because you yeah. have to. And they yeah, that's a good point, James. Shouldn't You shouldn't have to do it once. You shouldn't have to be like, hey, sorry I was uh, be, say, of sexually advancing towards a child. You shouldn't have to say that once. You know? Because, wow, man, so easy to not do that. It's actually so easy. Dude, it's actually the easiest thing in the world to not DM sexual advances to a child. It's crazy how easy it is. You just don't do it, you know? Because first off, you're DMing your... They're always fans of him, which is fucking weird, too. Because um, there's already, like, a weird you know, power dynamic, right? And then, but even if that was, like, fine to do, when you're talking to someone, you should be like, well, maybe, you know, ask them <laughs> how old they are. Maybe go to their other social media. But he's just putting himself in such a shit situation when you're already DMing your fans to be like, yo, send me a picture of your fucking balls. Like, it's so, I don't know, man conversation and many people have shared their thoughts and opinions and i want to take some time to address literally everything in today's video um but before doing that i want to make it really really clear all right um, 
I also just want to make a quick note as well that I'm filming this on the night of March 31st. It is currently 12.54 in the morning. Um, I'm alone here in the studio and I know that when I upload this tomorrow, it is going to be April Fool's Day, which is awful timing because this video yeah, this topic brutal. is not a joke in any way, shape or form. Uh, and I don't want anybody to think that it is, but I also don't want to wait any longer to speak about this. I want you guys to know that this is very, very important to me and I'm taking this very, very seriously. Uh, the last thing that I want to say before I just get into it is that uh, I think it's important that I provide I'm surprised it has more likes and dislikes, but it's pretty close. Within the past couple of weeks, two different people, both under the age of 18, have recently come forward saying that they had inappropriate messages with me on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them being from last year and one of them being from more recent. Uh, in both of these cases, I added these people on Snapchat, asked how old they were right away, was told that they were 18, believed them, engaged in a flirty conversation, and then later on found out that they were actually 16. Uh, upon finding out, I was immediately embarrassed and blocked both people. Later on, when I saw them making videos aye, about it and aye, those videos aye. went viral, my immediate reaction, completely honestly, was to be really, really upset. I wanted to get on camera and film another No More Lies video where I gather all my receipts and all my screenshots and try to tell my side of the story and then just move on from the situation. And now- Yeah, I mean, I did see some screenshots and I, I know you can't always, who knows, yet, right? But I did, I remember, I seem seeing screenshots of someone like telling him that or not like explicitly telling him that he was underage, but you know, you know, I don't want to just say stuff because I, I, maybe I'm remembering it incorrectly. I don't want to like just speculate shit and like someone to take this and put it in a fucking tea spill video, but you, it's just, it's just, again, it is so easy to not do that. James lames lames charles bro i fucked up and i need yeah. to take accountability for my actions and most importantly apologize to the people that were affected by them these conversations should have never happened point blank period there's no excuse for it there's no if ands or buts and i take full responsibility for that i trusted the information that was given to me rather than the information i could have and should have gotten myself in both of these situations Doing research into these people's public social media profiles would have revealed their true ages, and therefore these conversations would have never happened in the first place. Oh, it wouldn't happen in the first place if you weren't DMing your fans on Snapchat. Where's that clip I wanted to jump to really quick? And I finally, finally came to a conclusion. It sucks, and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this, but I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. Ah, uh, that's... Oh no! Oh no! Oh. Whoa! 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 Hey man! Hey man! Let's backpedal a bit. Oh, that is the worst. Why would you say that, man? I'm desperate. Ah! Oh no! It is one thing to be desperate and down bad, but. That doesn't mean you DM your underage fans sexual things, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yikes. Judge, your, uh, your honor, I, th I, I think you're under misunderstanding one part of this whole equation. I was desperate. Like, fuck, fuck off, dude. And there's another clip I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so this is actually a high, uh, a clip from the H3 podcast, or Frenemies podcast, that I'm bringing up. They're reacting to a clip on their podcast. I'm reacting to the podcast on my podcast. So this is like Inception in the worst way. Yo, what if Inception was simply a podcast? Um, okay, let's play it. <laughs> like, I'm much more mentally and emotionally mature than a lot of people my age. I'm not physically attracted to older guys, which sucks. Like, I would date, like, the absolute youngest, like, 18, 19, that looks a little bit old. Um, Bro. It's just, like, you can keep saying that it's, like, not... It's just a coincidence. You know, he's not trying for it to happen. But, like, when you see shit like that, it's, like, bro. Why? That's just weird. That's just a weird fucking thing to say. Like, how old is James Charles? He's what, like 58, right? No, he's 21. 21? 
Yeah, I mean, so he's like early twenties, but still, man, it's like you're just find someone your own age. It's so easy. It's <laughs> it's literally so easy, bro. Oh man, I didn't. You know, his apology video is fucking super long and. Honestly, think that I owe it to you guys to kind of walk you through the reflection that I've been doing. Um, so you know that I'm taking this seriously, how I came to terms with my desperation and uh. how it led me here. In 2019, my dating life became even more public than it already was when I was called <clears> out and labeled as a predator. You guys, I feel like at this point, all know the story, so I don't want to go back into details, but you guys already know I'm a predator, so I don't want to go back over that. I had all the receipts to back it up, but at the time I also recognized that I definitely needed to change the way I was going about dating because clearly something was not working. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's good. I don't want to watch the whole fucking thing. Cause I'll just probably get pissed off, but I don't know, man. It seems like he's just going to keep doing what he's doing and people aren't going to, you know, do anything and he's just going to keep making videos for some reason this guy just keeps fucking no matter what happens to this guy he just he just makes an apology video takes a month off and he's back uh you know he's back to the original programming so what's the fucking point you know but i fucking hope he just figures it out and stops like preying on these like kids you know Cause they don't know any better, kids. You know, oy 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 oy. How about we end this on a fucking positive, dude? Let's do some advice. Let's hear a let's hear a bop. Let's hear a quick little bop, huh? Shall we? Um, uh, we could do some advice. Uh, uh, Damn, I need a jingle for my advice segment. Jingle, for jingle, jingle, for jingle for my advice segment. For my advice segment. Jingle for my advice segment. Okay, okay, guys, we're gonna do some advice. This is the advice segment. If you want to email questions advice stuff you need advice with advice for it's um very really good at gmail.com so uh this one is from oh i can stop recording my screen oops okay so this one is from professor banana i said i wanted to ask you how long it took for your skin to get better when you went on accutane accutane question since i'm a girl my doctor recommended i take a certain type of birth control typically used to treat acne before giving Accutane a try. I just want to know how, I just want to roughly, okay, I just want to know roughly how long it took for your skin to get better. For reference, my acne is moderate. And also, how did you deal with the severe dry skin that acne medication causes? My skin is irritated and really dry, and any amount of moisturizer doesn't seem to help. I'm thankful for masks. (laughs) True. Oh, yeah, true. Dude, this would be a clutch time to go on Accutane. No one has to see your face, bro. I wish COVID was a thing when I was in when I was on Accutane. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, cause oh boy, was I insecure. Accutane sucks so hard when you're on it, but it rips when you're off of it. I'll tell you that. It Accutane fucking rips when you're done. Cause you know I get zits sometimes. Like these next zits are finally going away. I get zits like. On my side of my face, sometimes on like my cheek, but that's about it. Um, and the scars somehow went away. Um, so just know how it took for my skin to get better. It took like a year. When I was on Accutane, it was like a 10 month. I was on it for 10 months. Uh, I think they extended it to a year though. My original thing was 10 months. They extended it to a year. And then it got better around the 10 month point. And the last two months was sort of just like, bow, bow, bow. It was like a big buildup. And then uh, and the last two months was like a big explosion of good stuff. So um, so that was, that was cool. Definitely took a while. But yeah, man, it's hard dealing with it just because like acne is already, um, like mine was so bad. My whole face was red all the time. Um, I had a bunch of little tiny ones and it was just a fucking nightmare. Um, and it sucks, man. Cause you can't like go outside. You can't like, like you can, but like, it's just, you can't enjoy yourself. Cause you're always like, well, what are people looking at my acne or people judging me or making jokes about me? Um, 
And you couldn't wear white shirts because sometimes the zits on your shoulders would just pop and there'd be blood on the tops of your white shirt. Gross as fuck, you know? But that's what it was. Because I had backne too, dude. I had it all. Um, crackne? <laughs> when you have acne in your butt crack? <laughs> um, no, I... <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so it took a while. And it's not... And it also sucks when your skin gets super dry and then your nose bleeds every day uh, and your lips are all fucked because you're so dry. Um, But I'll tell you this. It is a nightmare for how long you're on it. Uh, It's going to suck. But, dude, when you're done it, it is so worth it. It is absolutely worth it. Um, So, you know what? You just got to say, you just got to, you know, suck it up. You know, sucks to suck, I guess. Because when you're done, it's going to be lit, dude. Your skin's going to be, your skin's going to be um, popping and not in the acne way. <laughs> it was popping in the zit way before, but, you know, not anymore. Bars. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's go to another question. This one is from Z- uh, Zane, uh, Zane. This one's from Zane Malik from One Direction. So I'm 16, and up until this weekend, uh, I hadn't had my first kiss. Uh, Last weekend, my friend invited me to her party and I decided to go despite never having met anyone else she invited. Anyways, I went in and it was really nice at first. From the beginning, I was looking at this one girl who I immediately found attractive. I didn't know if she was straight. I didn't think she was. So when she approached me, I just came out and asked her. She said she was straight, but she wanted to experiment. At this point, she had figured out I was bi. So she asked me if I found her attractive and I said yes. Then she asked me if I would have kissed her, and I said, well, I haven't even had my first kiss yet. After I said that, she turned me around and kissed me without asking me first. Oh, no. Okay. I'm still not sure if she actually found me attractive or if she just start, decided to start her experimenting right then, because after that, I avoided her for the rest of the evening. Uh, I've always been a huge romantic, and I know that no one's first kiss is perfect, but I at least wanted mine to be consensual and with someone I... Hadn't met literally an hour before. I felt really uncomfortable after it happened and honestly a bit violated. Any advice on how to get over this? Am I overreacting? Does this does me calling her attractive count as consent? Well, no. First off, no, it does not. Uh, I'm sorry that that happened. Um, you know, I'd like to think that this person wasn't this person didn't have any, you know, ill intentions with that. Maybe they were trying to be you know, flirty or something. You know, I like to give them the benefit of the doubt, I guess, but also don't do that, you know? Don't just kiss someone <laughs> after talking to them for, like, one second. Uh, yeah, I mean, this kind of hits home, I guess, a bit. My first kiss, I guess, well, I mean, not really. I don't really count it as my first kiss because it wasn't consensual. Uh, I was in like third grade and this girl, uh, Brianne, um, she got her, I was swing on a swing. Uh, she got her friends to like, I, I was coming down the swing, like, you know, up on the arc. I was swinging fucking high, dude. I was getting some air and I came down and her friends like grabbed the swing and they wrapped me around, they spun me around. So I, and like, they like held me and then Brianne like ran over. Uh, and, and kissed me because she had like a crush on me. Um, so, and I didn't want, I didn't want that, you know, I was a kid, right? I did, I was a little child. Um, that's not like, you know, it didn't really affect me that much. Like that wasn't like traumatic for me. I was just like, ugh, cooties, fuck off. <laughs> I didn't say fuck off. I was just like, ew, cooties. I didn't like it, but I was just like, you know, I was able to like free myself after a little bit because, you know, I'm a strong little lad. But um, so I think that's, I guess, I don't even know what my advice would be. Maybe don't count that as your first kiss because that, you know, it's only, it doesn't, it doesn't count, right? It doesn't count. Some idiot just friggin' laid one on you. Fuck them, dude. That doesn't count. They didn't take your first kiss. The first kiss is the one that you decided to be. 
okay? Because if we can place so much importance on a first kiss, then I think we should be able to, you know, decide which one it is, okay? And I'm sorry I had to go through that. And just know that you're totally fine to feel the way you're feeling. You're not overreacting. And just calling someone attractive doesn't mean that's consent, you know, for a kiss. Oh, my stomach's growling. Um, I'm hungry. Yeah. Um, but I hope that helps. I'm sorry. Maybe my anecdote helps you, you know. You're not alone, I guess. Um, but I'm sorry I had to go through that. I am. Um, all right, we should probably wrap this up. We're at, like, what, 50-something? Crazy, dude. Uh, but thanks thanks for... Uh, Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. This is this was a good one. This was fun. Um, hope you enjoyed it. You know, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know who you want to see as a guest. I want to get more guests on here, so let me know who you want to see. Um, you know, my hair is flipping out of here. It looks so dumb. Whatever. Um, yeah, subscribe. Do all that shit. Do what you want. I don't care. Check out Curtis Pogger, dude. And that's it. Just take care. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Um, And I will catch you on the flip. Why did I say it? I will catch you on the flip. Why did I say it like that? Um, All right. Well, thanks for for listening. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, enjoy, uh, enjoy your week. Peace.